The large veg trug outside the kitchen's looking quite colourful, I think. You can see there's a couple of different varieties of lettuce here. I've got some marigolds in and a couple of little stalks just to add some colour. And then a bit of a random leek and a couple of garlic are in there as well. And there's some little onions at the back, although I don't think they're going to do anything. And then this large batch of very closely planted lettuce that is great for me and for the birds. My new little fence is doing its job in keeping the chickens out of the, the flower beds. Which is great. <laughs> now here... Um, I do have some allium and iris but I hadn't planned for the hostas to come up quite so quickly and the allium and iris have not started flowering so we have got a bit of a clash here so I don't know how this will go hopefully I'll get some iris and allium but of course you can see the, the hosta here and there's another one here actually are going to take over um, for most of the summer. Oh, hello girls. We've got some wallflowers in here, uh, some sort of daisy-like flowers whose name escapes me. And there are some Rudbeckia in here to come up later. And then we've got this lovely Hookera, which is doing lovely. And over here we've got these crazy uh, peony flowered tulips that have, some of them have multi heads. There's, that one's got two flower heads and that one's got three. They are really, really striking, I have to say. Some more irises there. No flowers as yet. And then an aquilegia, which won't be too long before it actually starts flowering. And moving along, we've got some more, another uh, hosta, which always look great at this time of year before the slugs start. Uh, some more sort of daisy-like flowers and another aquilegia. And then over here, I haven't cleared the, um, the dead stems from last year but there's lots of rudbeckia come up here later on in the year and if i just skip by the the arch here's one of my my larger hostess which is looking great oh and i'm also growing a cat over there as you can see ollie what are you doing in my pot the lesser striped cat plant, I think. <laughs> Down the opposite bed from the one that we've just seen, there's a few pots here with a few things going on. I've got some Rudbeckia here that uh, overwintered. A little parsley in there. And then I bit the bullet and I planted out these um, hollyhocks that I grew this year from seed. So I've got three pots of those. I have high hopes. <laughs> and here's one of my potatoes, one of the earlier ones that I put in that um, is doing quite well. I, I've had to cover this quite a lot over the, over the past few weeks at night because we've had frosts, but I think we're over the frosts now, fingers crossed. And then going down to another bed that I've put my funky fencing round. 
And there's a variety of things here. Starting with this, which I can't remember what it is. Can't remember what it is. Hmm. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> is that blooming geranium that spreads like wildfire? This will give me purple flowers. Didn't plant it. I didn't plant it here in the first place, but it has popped up. This little poppy here. And this is Simisifuga. And more of I'm going to get rid of some of this. Look at it. It goes everywhere. There's more of it over here. This uh, perennial geranium. Then we've got another aqualegia. <laughs> we've actually got a raspberry cane there. I might leave it and see if I can get some raspberries from it this year. And then these are the lovely scarlet poppies. Um, and these do well every year. Once they, they die back, I plunk a couple of pots here just to um, continue having colour at this part of the bed. And here we have one of the first things I ever planted in my garden and I can't for life me remember what it's called but it's looking quite glorious this year it's almost going over actually um, lovely little little flowers it's looking quite good down the side of the house here we've got these lovely tulips what variety are they? They are at Foxtrot. These are new ones this year to me. And just lovely, actually. Nice size of flower and a lovely sort of pink and white. And then these um, daffies have given us some nice colour, which are going over now. And then mostly in here, we have a variety of potatoes. So the ones that are showing most... Um, Palms are the ones that I sowed early on and actually this one here and this one here and another couple that one there and that one there I actually um, originally grew uh, little potatoes or potatoes in little pots indoors and then once we had the plants showing I put them into these larger pots so they're doing great and then down here we've got this little experiment where I have is a charlotte potato or a couple of charlottes in um, a small pot but actually they're in a, a poly bag in a sort of shopping bag within the pot so that hopefully uh, when I want to see how the potatoes are getting on or to see if there's any to harvest I can just lift the, the poly bag out of the bucket um, have a look and then pop it back in again and then we've got two large pots at the back these are big 65 litre pots with jazzy potatoes in in this one I, I've grown them in layers, so I've got a layer of three and then a layer of two. Because they're determinate, they're only going to, um, the, the potatoes are all going to be in a single layer. Um, so we'll have one layer with the three potatoes and one layer with the two, hopefully. And then again, I've got five jazzy potatoes in this pot, but I didn't layer them. I just put them all in the one level. And it'll be interesting to see if there's a, a difference in the harvest size. This one went in the 14th of March, this one went in on the 20th of March, so there's a little bit of difference in, in time. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how they go. At the back there, there's some elephant garlic, which is doing fine. And then there's a little shallot there. And a little shallot there. And all of this is protected with this plastic mesh so that the chickens can't get in. Because as you can see, I let them free range in the garden and they like having a good scratch around. Now in these pots, um, I, I actually went to a garden centre yesterday and I bought some veg plants and I included some parsnips. Never grown parsnips at all from seed or otherwise. And I sort of decided, well, let's have a shot with the... The, the small seedlings that they sell. Now, I know that I'm taking a risk here because it's a root crop and they don't like ha having their sort of roots, particularly their big tap roots, um, sort of played about with. And you have to sort of split these seedlings because they come quite well compacted in the, the packs that you get from garden centres. But 
you know, nothing to lose. It hardly cost anything for the, the, the seedlings and I've popped them in a couple of buckets. And again, the buckets themselves, I don't think are conducive to giving me large parsnips. But you know, if I can get some little dinky parsnips, um, I'll be quite happy. And just while I'm here, I've got a couple of kitchen washing up basins with holes in. And I think this is red salad bowl lettuce we've got in here, which is ready to harvest, both for me and the odd treat for the girls. I've put some of my peas uh, in this pot with a little obelisk thing to grow up. So just a, a little circle of peas. These are Douche Provence. And hopefully the chickens won't eat too much since I've got a little bit of mesh. Although they are eating a little bit, as you can probably tell. But we'll see. Oh. Are you still keeping that potato warm, Oliver? What are you doing? You're mad. So, uh, yeah, I've got some Charlotte here, um, under the cat there, and some Charlotte there. Oh, Beryl, you're all right. And over here, I have some more. Well, there's some Jazzy there. And there's some, if I just move this, that was a chicken deterrent. There's some Charlotte there as well, just starting to come through. What is it, you? In this big pot, I've got uh, beetroot. So I sowed, well, I didn't sow directly. I put some little seedlings in here. And I have also uh, put some radish in. And you can see the radish is starting to come. These bits are from the sycamore tree that we have around here. Um, they are blooming messy trees, I have to say. Although it's great to have trees around. So there's another little radish there. So a few, hopefully I get a little um, crop of radish out of this as the, the beetroot is growing. And the garlic, well it's actually the bean bed but it's got garlic in it just now. Um, I've got two types of garlic on the left here is the garlic that I saved my, from my own garlic last year. And in the right, this is checkmate. And it seems to be doing fine, it's weathered all the the freezing weather as you would expect. I have been a bit brave given that we've had pretty cold weather and I've put some uh, flowers in some hanging baskets. Here's some trailing fuchsia. I didn't grow them myself I have to say. And then these little tiny dinky, these are trailing sweet peas. These are my own <laughs> little tiny trailing sweet peas with a little pot in the middle there to, to help um, water them. So hopefully these will grow on and they'll bulk up and I'll get a nice little hanging basket with some trailing sweet peas there. And I have also, I did buy some other trailing sweet peas. These are larger ones, or larger. Uh, these, they're further on, I should say. And um, I've got these in a basket. These have been out for a little while. And yeah, hopefully I'll get some nice trailing sweet peas there as well. Down the side of the deck, we've got some more elephant garlic here. Which is looking fine. And then here, uh, I think last weekend, I sowed out some more of my peas. These are Douche Provence. And I also put a couple of rows of turnip in and I can just see some of them now starting. I can some, some here and some here. So hopefully we'll get some turnip appearing from there. I've got some more potatoes here. There's a couple of um, half filled bags with some Picasso in. They're a main crop and I'll just uh, earth them up as they show. And these three pots with straw are the potatoes that I have in Erica, Erica's um, 
potato growing challenge 2021 where I've got 1.5 kilos of shop bought potatoes and I am growing them compost and fertiliser etc at the base of the pots and then the pots are just filled up with um, with straw so never done it before we'll see if it works nothing showing at the moment I wouldn't expect it to um, I've just got this pinned on to keep the the straw in one place in the winds. Cauliflowers in the little cauliflower cage here seem to be doing fine. The ones at the back have got the, the slug protection halos on and they've, they're a little bit ahead of these other three that I just popped in later on. There's a, some sign of, signs of munching um, but generally I think they're going to be okay so far. The grow houses are still pretty full. It's mostly flowers now. Uh, we've got some salvia in here and some calendula, which I think I can start getting out. There's a little bit of dill <laughs> there. Um, just having a look at the thermometer. Oh, upside down. So the maximum yesterday was 12 and a half degrees. It's 8.1 8 just now and the lowest was 3.9 in here. So that's at least the lowest wasn't freezing, which is good. I'll reset that. Um, I have quite a lot of zinnias, but something is a munching. There's a slug in here. I'm going to have to have a look because I can see slug trails. And then there's some rudbeckia here. All sorts. I can get the rudbeckia out, actually. Some celery down here. Um, asters, fuchsias, and some more calendula. Oh, and down here, there's some dahlias. So yeah, that's looking okay, although I'll need to hunt the slug. And then in this grow house, I'll just be quick because someone started banging. Uh, there's some more zinnia there. It's a cactus, giant cactus mix. Some more calendula. Then we've got some lupins. Some cosmos at the back. Lavatera or lavatera, however it's spelled eh, or pronounced. Um, some more, there's some bits and bobs there we'll ignore. Uh, some rudbeckia. Some pansies. Uh, Brussels sprouts. More pansies and then these are some of the sunflowers that I just sowed recently so there won't be anything showing there at the minute. Just while I'm here balanced on a pot to keep it away from chickens we've got Carrot Romance F1 which I actually are these the ones that I yeah I actually chitted these seeds and then popped in the the little chitted seeds once they started to show. That's more blooming sycamore debris. Uh, yeah, so I've got a few there. Hopefully they're going to be okay. And talking of carrots around the side here, I've actually got two pots of carrots that are from last year. Uh, they're in little pots, so they'll be, they'll be dinky carrots, but I might actually harvest one or both of these. But I'll do a separate little video for that as and when I do it. These are actually Eskimo. In Tom and I's little anniversary box, these little miniature hostas have come back up and I've popped in some begonia that I bought the other day and some of my own zinnias. A bit early for the zinnias, I know, but we'll see how they go. I've got lots of spears. Okay, on the deck again. I've got some red salad bowl lettuce here. Here is my little lemon themed bed. So we've got sorrel at the back, lemon thyme, lemon balm and lemon coriander. Now the lemon coriander I grew from seed. It's, is it okay? Touched a little bit with the frost I think. It's not going to seed already? Hopefully not. 
Uh, and I've got space here for one other thing. So I'm not quite sure what I'll put in there. Suggestions would be good. Um, there's some beetroots in here. I know very close together, but baby beets are the order of the day for this one. And then I think this is called year round lettuce. And yep, it's doing fine. Um, in the, this pot, I've actually got some asters grown from seed, so I've popped them out. Hopefully they'll be okay. And it's a mix. It's called palette mix, so it's just a mix of colours. Next to the quail, we've got some rudbeckia. This is daisy mix at the back. And then a couple of, well, three asters actually. Two rudbeckia and three asters in here and some more beetroot in here. And then just sitting on top of the quail, <laughs> we've got some more year-round lettuce. Very striking colour, almost burgundy actually. And then some little lettuce coming on. So I think rain is stopping play here, so I'm going to call a halt. I'll leave you back at my nice colourful, colourful veg shrug. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and um, any comments about what you've seen or anything you're growing uh, and any suggestions you have for what I might try, pop them in the comments below and I'll talk to you again very soon. But for now, bye bye.